Being overrated means many different things to many different people, and often others go apeshit at the thought of these lists containing a game they like. I just want to say that overrated doesn't necessarily mean bad. On the contrary, every game on this list I consider to be at the very least fun. So what does it mean to be overrated? To me, and in this instance, overrated means a game that's being highly rated by both critics and fans alike and is being held in too high of a regard. So for an example, you won't be seeing something like Modern Madden on the list because yes, those games sell well and generate more money than Scrooge McDuck did in the intro of DuckTales, but these games aren't held to a high regard whatsoever. Number six, UFC 2. Whenever you come across a video on UFC 4, there's always a slew of people who say how trash the game is. I think that's a bit harsh, but I'm not gonna put up an argument because shit like this can happen in UFC 4. But what's more interesting is the two games that are always brought up that are better, UFC Undisputed 3 and EA Sports UFC 2. UFC Undisputed 3 is a very good game. UFC 2 though? Uh... The striking is praised, but fighters load up their punches like Super Smash Brothers characters, and the way they throw them looks like the punch is being thrown underwater or the gravity is heavier. Everyone has Rocky Balboa levels of durability, you can spam the parry system, which means every fight just comes down to parry counters, and combos look ridiculous. Like you can throw these six uppercut combos. The clinch is far too stationary and it just looks like two dudes rubbing against each other. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. And the ground game is almost the same as UFC 4, minus the terrible ground and pound. The only other thing that's ever brought up is that the knockouts are better, but these knockouts are so unrealistic. Fighters get launched up into the air, and I fully expect to see the toasty guy from Mortal Kombat every time I see this. It's fine if you like it, but you can't criticize UFC 4 for being too arcadey, but then praise the game that has knockouts where the fighters are lifted half a foot off the ground. <laughs> not gonna lie, I'm stumped at the reasoning why UFC 2 is praised. It's not even old enough for it to be a nostalgia thing. Number 5, SmackDown and SmackDown 2 Just Bring It. These games were the start of the SmackDown series and would even shape how the series would play later on. But outside of the novelty of playing a wrestling game in 3D on a home console, there's nothing going on here that would have you coming back to play like so many other classic games. If you played Here Comes the Pain or Shut Your Mouth, then there isn't one reason to come back to these earlier SmackDown games. Not unless you really like entrances where wrestlers walk in front of a Titantron video, or loading screens when each Rumble entrant enters a match. These games are fun, but let's be honest here. If you had an N64, you were playing much better wrestling games. And if you didn't have an N64, you either had a choice between this or the Acclaim wrestling games. Ew. Either way, you're playing a significantly inferior product. But you gotta love those commercials. Finally, The Rock has come back to PlayStation. PlayStation. Number four, Skate 3. Skate 3 cleaned up and polished a lot of the little rough patches that Skate 2 had, added more tricks, and made skating feel better overall. So why is it on the list? Skate was a series that was meant to be different to the Tony Hawk series by being a down-to-earth realistic take on the genre. Then Skate 3 happened. Skate 3 went in a more arcade direction that focused on Hall of Meat challenges where you're twirling through the air and rolling down steps and a cannonball. Even the skating challenges are more over the top than ever with these insane tasks. The vibe from Skate 2 is totally gone. Everything is so clean looking now, and the security guards are skateboarding too, and the town you skate in isn't nearly as good as Skate 2's towns, and you can't leave the boundaries a lot of the time. And overall, it's just a downgrade from Skate 2. Skate 3 is by far the most popular game in the series, and I think it's because of the extraordinary amount of glitches that this game has. All the green haired YouTubers were picking it up, and that gave the game some popularity. I hope Skate 4 focuses on what made the series great. For example, make it closer resemble Skate 2. Number 3. SSX. 
I just made a video on the whole series, so I'll be relatively quick with this one. The original SSX doesn't control well and makes it difficult for you to do the insane tricks that you associate the series with. The game is low on content and can be completed in an afternoon's worth of play and not much replayability after that. You can't restart a race or a show off event once you've started it and that had to have been an oversight of some kind. Tony Hawk showed you could do arcade extreme sports well and 1080 snowboarding showed how to control a 3D snowboarding game. The sequels of SSX improve on every aspect and practically render the original The only reason why I can guess SSX has a 93 Metacritic score is because of the novelty of being a PS2 launch title. Because what else are you gonna do with your PS2 back then? Watch Stuart Little on DVD for the 500th time? Number 2 MLB The Show series. The MLB The Show games are always held in such a high regard as far as modern sports games go. And these games are really good, but it's time to face the music. The game's main mode is a microtransaction heavy card game. In development, most of the attention goes to that mode, so other modes like franchise get the shaft and not the good kind, and hardly get any updates besides basic UI updates. Sounds familiar? Every year when the game launches, the servers don't even work for like the first week, so you can't even enjoy that mode where most of the development resources go into. Then you have Road to the Show, which is the career mode. The big issue with this is that the developers have such a massive hard-on for forcing you into certain playstyles. There were these archetypes you choose from where certain attributes have a limit as to how far you can upgrade them. Then in MLB 21 The Show, you are forced to be a two-way player, meaning you have to both pitch and be a position player. Why take away all this freedom from the player? What does the game gain by doing this? And does anyone actually like this stuff? When it comes to gameplay, there are some flaws that have been in the game for years, like the fielding. When fielding the ball, you can get the worst animation where the fielder takes their sweet time, or the fielder doesn't even move at all. Swing and a miss got him reaching. And he'll He's just there. beat the throw to second. He's in there. The most egregious one I have recorded is this play where a soft liner is hit at third, and my third baseman plays the ball off his chest like a damn soccer ball. Hey, Chipper, you you know you have a glove, right? Then I press X to throw the ball home, and then he does what any normal person would do in this situation, strike a Power Rangers pose. Then he finally throws the ball, which is way too late to get any outs. And before you say it's my fault, here's my opponent struggling with tags. Swung on! and missed. And he scores on a daring steal of home. What do you want to do as a hitter, Dero? Yeah, right here, you are looking for anything above the belt. You see it up, you have to let it go. And before you say it's their fault, here's the CPU getting stuck in slow motion like bullet time was activated in Max Payne. Despite years of telling us the fielding is getting overhauled, it still sucks. And there are so many other things, like fielder's gloves not really closing, first baseman not having their foot on the bag half the time. Still no ability to challenge plays whenever you want, despite challenges being in baseball for like a decade now. A lot of the hitters have this weird, Ichiro-esque follow through on their swing, and the commentary is environmentally friendly because it's been recycled since MLB 07. Gone! They win it! Gone! They win it! R-E-C-Y-C-L-E -E, Recycle! So I don't really understand why this game is put on such a high pedestal. Is it the graphics? Well, the graphics were really damn good on PS3. Then on PS4 they were good but nothing outstanding. Then on PS5 they aren't impressive in the slightest with these players whose hair is so stiff it looks like they use cement as hair gel. The inability to put tattoos on players. And despite some places being really really windy, there's no signs of wind anywhere on the player's clothing. Because that's too hard to do. It's never been done before in a baseball game. Nope, never ever been done in a baseball game. I can't think of one game that has wind on the player's uniform. I think the praise this series often gets is because it's a PlayStation Studios game, and anything that's published by Sony gets a huge amount of hype. I think people just see a game published by Sony and assume it's automatically great. The series is good, but it could be so much better. Number 1. Tecmo Bowl and Tecmo Super Bowl If you never played a sports game, odds are you heard of Tecmo Bowl. Hell, if you never played a video game, you still probably heard of Tecmo Bowl. It's a mainstay in pop culture, and everyone associates Bo Jackson with it as he was the first overpowered video game character. The game was the first of its kind, having the NFL license, stat tracking, play calling, season mode. These games set the foundation for future sports games. The main issue I take with it is the fact that so many people have this as not only one of the greatest football games of all time, 
possibly number one, but one of the greatest video games of all time. Yeah, that doesn't sit right with me. When we're talking greatest games of all time, we're talking a game that can stand out and be great in any era. Tech Mobile just doesn't do that. When you look at NFL 2K5, it's been 15 years since its release, and we still don't have a level of quality football that that game provides. That's a greatest game of all time right there. When it comes to Tech Mobile, there are so many other sports games that are better, and even if we limit it to pixelized football games, there are games on mobile devices that are better. It's like when people have Pong as one of their greatest games of all time, simply because of the innovation that it provided. Even ranking it above NFL 2K5, which is maddening. Not Madden, but maddening. The only people who would legit think this have to be over the age of 60. I understand that they worked with the tech they had at the time, but that's just how it is, unfortunately. Tech Mobile has earned its rightful place in pop culture and deserves credit for being innovative with the genre. But in my personal opinion, putting it in these top game of all time discussions is taking it a step too far. Once again, thank you guys for watching. I would never ask you to like the video, but I do have a goal, and that goal is to get a star on a Hollywood Walk of Fame. And if you like the video, I get one step closer to that goal. 